Hello, this is Joanna, and in this video, I'll look at why an increase in input prices decreases supply. Let's talk first about inputs in production. This is a broad category that includes anything that firms use to produce their goods and services, like raw materials, other goods, and factors of production, like labor or capital. If you think of a restaurant, you know that for a meal to appear before a patron, the restaurant has had to rent or buy a place, buy the ingredients and cookware, hire a chef, waiters, receptionists, the list goes on. If you picture a software company that produces video games, you know that for a game to appear before a gamer, the firm has had to buy or rent computers and software, hire programmers, admins, marketing staff, you get the idea. An increase in the price of any of these inputs will mean higher costs for the firms in these markets. These, in turn, will decrease supply or shift it to the left, because firms will deal with higher costs by either charging a higher price for any given quantity or by charging the same price but selling a smaller quantity. Let's see each scenario in detail. Let's first look at a market where firms decide to charge a higher price for any given quantity of the good. Say, this is the video game market. The supply curve, upward sloping, reveals how at a higher price of the good, game makers are more able and willing to sell their games. For example, at price $20, 15 games are offered, and at price $40, 35 games are offered. This is just the law of supply at work. Suppose there's a shortage of good programmers, so wages are on the rise. A tough decision's on the horizon for game makers. Either they take the hit and reduce profit margins, or they try to pass the cost on to consumers. After all, bankrupt firms create no games. Let's say game makers figured out that $10 per game is all they need to keep their profit margin. They will thus try to sell each game at a higher price. Where before they charged $20 to sell 15 games, they will now charge $30, 20 plus 10. And where before they charged $40 to sell 35 games, they will now charge $50, 40 plus 10. We could do this for a bunch of other prices, but you get the idea. Any quantity that video game producers were willing and able to sell will now be sold at a price that has increased by $10. This means we'll have a new supply curve, S1, above the original one, S0, by $10, the extra bit each game now costs. Note how the new supply curve, S1, sits to the left of the original supply curve, S0. This means supply decreased because at any level of the price, the number of games producers put on the market is lower than before. Take price $20. The new supply curve shows a quantity supplied that's lower than before wages went up. 5 is lower than 15. Similarly, at price $40, quantity supplied is now 25 games, fewer than the 35 from before. Supply decreased. Let's now look at a different scenario. Suppose that faced with higher costs, firms keep their prices but reduce the quantity they supply. It may surprise you, but many firms do this. It's not your imagination. Cereal packages and chocolate bars have shrunk in size. It's called shrinkflation. Suppose we're looking at the chocolate candy bar market. To make more sense, quantity is measured in weight, in grams, and not in number of bars. FYI, 100 grams is about 3.5 ounces. The supply curve, upward sloping, shows how, at higher prices, chocolate makers are more able and willing to sell their sweets. For example, for $1.50, chocolate producers will offer 40 gram chocolate bars, and for $2, producers will offer 60 gram bars. For reference, a typical Kit Kat is about 40 grams and a Snickers bar is about 53. Suppose rising temperatures ruined cocoa crops, so prices are on the rise. This is bad news for chocolate makers who have to pay more for cocoa beans and are seeing their costs go up. Rather than increase prices, chocolate makers decide to shrink the size of their chocolate bars. Now, for price $1.50, Chocolate makers are willing to offer 30 gram bars of chocolate. And at price $2, only 50 gram bars are offered. We could repeat this exercise for many different prices, but you get the idea. Chocolate makers are willing to sell smaller chocolate bars. We'll have a new supply curve, S1, to the left of the original one. 
as zero by 10 grams, the bit that's missing from each chocolate bar that is sold. At any level of the price, the weight of the chocolate bars is lower than before. Take price $1.50. The new supply curve shows a quantity supplied that's lower than before cocoa prices went up. 30 grams is lower than 40. At price $2, quantity supplied is also lower, 50 grams instead of 60. In sum, you just saw two different approaches to thinking about higher input costs, but the result was the same. The supply curve shifted to the left, meaning that at any level of the price, producers are willing and able to put a smaller quantity in the market than before input prices went up. Thanks for watching.